My name is Erica Trim. Today I will be summarizing the annotated bibliography from the educational bench to the clinical bedside, translating the Dreyfus developmental model to the learning of clinical skills. This article addresses the Dreyfus model, which is a five-stage model for adult skill acquisition. I will review each stage of the model and discuss how this model can be applicable in the development of clinical skills in medicine. Stewart and Hubert Dreyfus first published their five-stage model for adult skill acquisition in 1980. This was initially applied to learning to drive a car or play chess. These brothers argued that all skill acquisition is mastered through the following five stages, novice, advanced beginner, competent, proficient, and expert. The article being summarized today actually includes six stages with an additional stage being the master of the acquired skill. The purpose of the article reviewed today is to create a framework for learners of clinical medicine to be assessed. This describes an approach to teaching those in healthcare in a progressive manner based on their level of knowledge and skill. By the end of this video synopsis, the learner will be able to describe and explain each of the five stages of adult skill acquisition as outlined by the Dreyfus brothers and Dr. Caraccio and colleagues. The learner should also have an understanding of how to apply these stages to skill acquisition in the healthcare setting. The novice is defined as one whose decision making is based on a set of rules. If X, then Y. If this, then that. No skill is present at this point. The student does not have any context in which to relate or process the information in an active manner. When applying this to healthcare learning, the student can connect learned facts about pathophysiology with clinical signs and symptoms that are presented. There is no clinical experience to add to this decision making. For example, a student sees a patient with pain that has lasted for one week. The student can recognize based on learned rules that this is an acute problem. The student is unable to elaborate further or relate this to any prior experience. The novice becomes an advanced beginner when he or she gains real life experience. Relevant content becomes more distinguishable. Patterns are becoming recognizable as similar situations repeat. There is mostly analytic reasoning involved here. When it comes to healthcare, this can involve formulating a differential diagnosis in a more focused direction and appropriately incorporating pertinent positives from a review of systems. The competent learner continues to build on experiences. There is usually an emotional buy-in that gives the learner a sense of responsibility for the outcome. Analytic reasoning is relied on less, but still comes into play for complex cases. Patterns become more recognizable when common clinical presentations arise. When applying this to healthcare, the learner has experienced different outcomes of similar situations. When a suboptimal outcome occurs, the learner becomes emotionally involved and feels responsible. This triggers increased engagement to refine the rules and improve future practice. The proficient learner has even more experience. This learner relies heavily on pattern recognition. Problem solving can become more intuitive though certain aspects outside of general recognition require continued analytic reasoning. This learner is more capable and is comfortable in evolving situations. In the healthcare setting, this learner is quicker to narrow down a differential diagnosis based on what is pertinent and what is not. Intuition also plays a large role based on past experiences. If the learner has seen a poor outcome previously in a similar case, the learner's intuition will tell them to intervene faster. The expert learner is largely based on intuition. This learner is open to the unexpected and welcomes more complex challenges to fulfill a progressive problem solving. This learner is mindful of their limitations and when they must revert to analytic reasoning. They are also able to perceive more subtle and refined discriminations that a proficient or competent learner may not recognize. 
When applying this to healthcare, this learner is able to form an immediate diagnosis and management plan for most clinical encounters. However, in being mindful of their limitations, they will utilize resources when needed for complex cases. The master is the final stage of skill acquisition. However, this learner continues to pursue learning. They possess practical wisdom. This learner has a deep level of commitment to their work Emotional engagement is driven by a great concern for right and wrong decision making. These learners continue to pursue learning and improvement. In healthcare, these are the leaders that we all look up to. These are the attendings who have been practicing for decades and know the answers to every novice question that we've ever asked. The attendings who choose to precept students because they are committed to educating the future of healthcare. In review, following this presentation, you should be able to recognize and explain each stage of adult skill acquisition as outlined by the Dreyfus brothers and Dr. Caraccio and colleagues. You should also be able to apply these stages to the healthcare world. The major differences advancing from a novice to an expert or master involves transitioning from following a set of rules to intuitively recognizing patterns. The master has an ability to focus on relevant details, whereas the novice considers everything. Here are my references if you would like to learn any more about this topic. Thank you for your time today.